Good day. In this short video, we're going to explain everything you need to know about the Windows time service on a domain. That's a big thing, on a domain. If you're not on a domain, computers will go out to the cloud and they will pull the information down from Microsoft, from their NetTime server. However, if you're on a domain, it will assume that you are knowledgeable and that you really need to control your own time. So, what it will do is this. All of the computers on your domain will feed up through their domain controllers and eventually get to the PDC emulator. Now that's the old NT4 primary domain controller emulator, PDC or PDCE as it's sometimes called. And basically that just is the uh, top of the tree. It's called an emulator because there is no such thing as a primary domain controller anymore. But there's this emulator because there's still some roles, some functions that need to be maintained, just like they did back in the old NT4 days. So to figure out which computer on your network is the PDC emulator, what you need to do is launch your Active Directory Users and Computers, right-click on the very top line, which is Active Directory Users and Computers in your domain name, go to All Tasks, and go to Operations Masters. The second tab over is the PDC emulator, the PDCE. That's the server you're most concerned about on a domain. Now what you need to do is figure out what the current configuration is. And that's not too hard to do. Just bring up a command prompt as an admin. And you can do this in Windows Terminal, PowerShell, or old school command prompt. And this is a terrifying response. Free running system clock. Guess what that is, boys and girls? That means it is getting its time from the local hardware. That means that your domain is subject to the little battery that's in the hardware that's running your domain. Wow, is that a bad idea? So what you need to do is change it. Where do you change it? Well, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can change it manually, and we'll show you that right now where the registry entries are, and we'll also show you the command. So let's bring up the registry. And if you're familiar with the registry, you'll find it's pretty much where you expect it to be. Oh, I've left it open, there you go. So let's get out of here and go all the way back. So it is in local machine, system, current control set, services, and then I just start typing W32. So I'm just a W32, get me down there. There it is. And these are the settings. And the ones you're probably most interested in is in parameters. There are two settings for the type that are available in Windows. NT5DS is indicating that Windows is grabbing the time from other machines on the network. But in this case, because the machine is top of the tree, because this is the PDC emulator, what in fact is happening is it's grabbing it from the free running system clock, better known as the hardware, better known as the BIOS or CMOS, terrible idea. So you can go into here and change a couple of things. The first is to change the type to NTP. I'm going to click cancel on this because I'm not, I don't want to do it this way, but just to show you, you can. Uh, and then set the net time server uh, to whatever you would like it to be. Again, just by double clicking and setting it. Or you can run a command. I like running the commands. Now, before you run the command or enter your net time service, you need to know what net time server you would like to use. And it's generally a very bad idea to use just a single time source you want to use a time source that's in a pool of time servers in a cluster. So that if one goes down, you're okay. You also probably want to set more than one of those pools because the time service is absolutely critical for Kerberos, uh, controls your authentication, encryption. And if your time is not right, your network will break. And I don't mean break like there'll be a couple of errors. I mean like it will stop working. Users will not be able to sign in. Machines will be off the network. It's a problem. So it's absolutely critical that you get this right. Now, there are a lot of time servers in the world. 
So which one should you use? Well, my suggestion is that you use the standard uh, ntp.pool.org. Just zip off to that website and then figure out where you are. Uh, and by the way, the reason why you want to choose a time server that's in your, well, your at least your general time zones, <laughs> your area, uh, is again because of uh, communication lag. So I'm going to select here North America and then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to select Canada because that's where I am. And you can see here that they have a suggestion which is to use, if you really don't know what you're doing, just use 0.pool.ntp.org or 1.pool.ntp.org. And if you do that, their system will find the closest one for you and you'll be on your way. In my case, I'm going to use 1.ca.pool.ntp.org and I'm going to use 3.ntp. And you'd think, why would you use different ones here? Why don't you just start with zero? Well, because everybody uses zero. <laughs> so I like to use a couple of them that are different from what everybody else does to keep the traffic down and hopefully make my time more accurate. This is the command you will use to set your time servers. And at first it's a little daunting, but if you look through it, it's pretty much English, W32 time service, configure, here's the list. Now here's where it gets a little bit odd. This is a space delimited list, which is very unusual these days. What that means is the entries that we have here, and I have three entries, are separated by a space, just like that one. And that one, they are not comma delimited, which is odd, but it's what it is, so get over it. And the second thing that's weird here is uh, you set the name of the server, which is the ones I just showed you, and you uh, set the type, and the type for almost everybody is going to be 08. 08 means this is a client. You can use special interval, Microsoft vigorously recommends against doing that. <laughs> but there are times when you may need to. You could also deprioritize a server and say, yeah, I'd really like you to use the other ones first uh, and uh, set them to 02. So for instance, I have a third time server here, which is time.nrc.ca. That's because I'm in Canada and I'm using the National Research Council's atomic clock. And I could set that to just be a regular client, or I could say, yeah, just use that as a fallback. So I could change that to a two. I will leave it as an eight because it's perfectly fine to get it from there. And then there's the symmetrical active, symmetrical passive mode. There's a bunch of things here. This is a separate sort of much longer story. If you want information on this, please just Google this phrase, Windows Time Server 3.3 modes of operation. You'll get piles of it. Very few people use this. Okay. Then uh, what's, re what's left here, slash sync from flags manual, yep, and update, you bet. So let's copy that. I'm just gonna paste that into my command line, press enter, command was completed successfully. Now let's take a look at the source. I'm just gonna use my up arrow here and go back to query slash source. It is using 3.ca.pool.nt, blah, 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 dot org. Isn't that nice? And let's go back to our registry and I'm gonna press F5 to refresh it. And you can see it has changed the type to NTP and it has changed the sources, which are NTP servers, to the ones that I listed. Now, there are a couple of things that you should know. One, and this is contrary to what most people will tell you, but Microsoft says you do not need to stop and start. In other words, you don't need to restart the W32 time service to make that change. It should all just be live. Secondly, if you want to force a computer to update its time, you can send it this command. And if everything is in hell for you and you want to set it back to default, get these are the four commands. Stop the service, unregister the service, which will strip all of the configuration. So there are four other things to talk about before we let you go. One is that you can set this also through GPO. Generally a bad idea, Microsoft warns against it, 
Not because it doesn't work, but because it just adds complexity. It's very difficult to remember 10 years later that you've set things through GPO. So that is not the best way to go about things. The next thing is that you need to remember to transfer the W32 time service settings when you transfer the PDC emulator. In other words, when your Active Directory FISMOs, the flexible service masters, change to a new piece of hardware or a new VM, you're going to need to make sure that the one that ho houses the PDC emulator is configured. It's an easy thing to forget. The third thing is to force an update, and this is the command for that. And you don't really have to do this. It will kick in over time. There it is. And the last thing is once you've got that done, you might want to run a strip chart. So let's just paste that command in. So that's W32 time service strip chart. And then, well, what server do you want to get that from? Well, I want to get it from the, I want the time to come from the server that I'm talking to. So I'm just going to press enter on this and it will just keep spitting out time. And you can see, yep, looks about right. I just pressed Control X, Control C there to kill it. If you see an error there, you've got something to fix. We'll have all these commands at www.urtech, that's www.urtech.ca. So you can just copy paste them if you want. We'll have a link to it in the comment section below. Hey, we'd really appreciate it if you'd click like, subscribe, comment, any of that stuff. Really appreciate it, very helpful with the Google algorithms. And uh, also, we'd like to talk to you. So if you have any questions, you know, you can always get a hold of us directly as well at www.urtech.ca. That's www.urtech.ca. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.